How y'all doing today? I want to touch on Black Lives Matter. Um, excuse my voice um, if my throat sounds a little scratchy, but um, I want to touch on Black Lives Matter and uh, Tyree Nichols, okay? The Tyree Nichols situation is sad. You know, I don't ever want to see a man lose his life. Um, they say it's a it's a reason behind it, something along the lines that he was messing with a cop's ex-girlfriend or wife. Or I don't know, something like that. But for the most part, you know, I don't ever want to see people lose their lives. But what I do want to talk about is how this Tyree Nichols situation is being blown. And when I say blown, blown to the extreme. Black Lives Matter and the media is milking the death of this man. I mean, when I say milking, they're milking the death of this man. And anyone who have, have eyes to see can see this. Like, they can see what's going on. Black Lives Matter, we're going to touch on these people, the founders mainly. Um, many of the people that walk around with Black Lives Matter shirts and all these different things, they, they really don't know what these people really stand for and what it's about. But so the Black Lives Matter origin, Black Lives Matter began following the deaths of Mike Brown, Trayvon Martin, and Eric Garner. The slogan Black Lives Matter remains untrademarked by any group. The slogan began with people hashtagging the slogan after the death of Trayvon Martin. This sparked a movement after the acquitted of George Zimmerman and the shooting death of Trayvon Martin. It became nationally recognized and popularized in 2014 after the deaths of Mike Brown and Eric Gardner. Since the Ferguson protests and riot, the number of participants has increased. Let's look at the Black Lives, Matters, uh, Black Lives Matter founders. We're gonna start with Patrice Cullors. Okay, let's start with her. So I'm gonna be reading from um, the Wikipedia, Wikipedia, uh, it says, Patrice Marie Kahn Colors Brignac is an American activist, co-founder of the Black Lives Matter movement. Artist and writer, Colors created the Black Lives Matter hashtag in 2013 and has written and spoken widely about the movement. Other topics on which Colors advocates Advocates include prison abolition in, in Los Angeles and the LGBTQ rights. Hmm. LGBTQ rights. What does this have to do with black lives? It's an agenda, but I'm going to keep reading. Colors integrates ideas from critical theory as well as social movements around the world in her activism. Colors has written two books. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go to the Black Lives Matter section in her Wikipedia. It says, along with community organizers and friends Alicia Garza and Opal Tometi, Colors founded Black Lives Matter. The three started the movement out of frustration over George Zimmerman's acquittal and the killing of Trayvon Martin. Colors created the hashtag Black Lives Matter in 2013 to corroborate Garza's use of the phrase in making a Facebook post about the Martin case. Colors further describe her impetus for pushing an African-American right stemming from her 19-year-old brother's brutalization during imprisonment in Los Angeles County jails. Colors and her Black Lives Matter co-founders Garza and Tometi I hope I'm saying her name right. That's the other founder. She's Nigerian. Set out to build a decentralized movement govern, governed by consensus of a members collective in 2015. A network of chapters was formed 
Colors has been the most publicly visible of the co-founders, especially after Garza and Tamati stepped back from regular involvement in the organization. She credits social media being instrumental in revealing violence against African Americans, saying, on a daily basis, every moment, black folks are being bombarded with the image of our, our death. It's literally saying, black people, you might be next. You will be next. But in hindsight, it will be better for our nation. The less of our kind, the more safe it will be. Sounds revolutionary, right? <laughs> Don't believe it. In 2017, she said that the movement would not meet with United States President Donald Trump just as it wouldn't have met with Adolf Hitler, as Trump is literally the epitome of evil, all the evils of this country, be it racism, capitalism, sexism, and homophobia. <laughs> ah, but the very people that you're working with is the epitome of evil. The very people that you're working with is the epitome of evil. Look at this. In May 2021, after holding the position for six, year, six years, which included setting up the organization's infrastructure, Colors resigned from her formal, formal role as executive director of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. Look at this. To focus on her second book and multi-year TV deal with Warner Brothers. Listen to me, guys. Anybody that's a real revolutionary it's not going to get a multi-year TV deal with Warner Brothers, guys. I don't. Anybody that believes in this Black Lives Matter stuff, you have to open your eyes. Do you really believe a real? You think you think they would have gave Fred Hampton? Fred Hampton was a real revolutionary. You know, I wish the brother could have. It would have been a beautiful thing to see him walk with y'all. Right. That they really they was really afraid of those guys, right? So Fred Hampton. Do you really believe he would have got a multi-year TV deal with Warner Brothers? Let me continue on. She said that the resignation had nothing to do with alleged attempts to discredit her and that it had been planned for over a year. Color said, I think I will probably be less visible because I won't be at the helm of one of the largest, most controversial organizations right now in the history of our movement. But no, but no movement is one leader. So I'm going to scroll down to the other activism, activism that she uh, participates in. Okay. Uh, hold on. So it says, Colors founded... The prison activist organization Dignity and Power Now, which succeeded in advocating for a civil oversight board. She is also a board member of the Ella Baker Center for Human Rights, having led a think tank on state and vigilante violence for the 2014 Without Borders Conference. In October 2020, she launched a production company with a deal with Warner Brothers Television. There you go again. You really think this woman is a revolutionary? Come on now. This is the idea. It's the ideology and policy positions. You can go to this on your own Wikipedia. The second paragraph. She cites the activist and formerly incarcerated Weather Underground member Eric Mann as her mentor during her early activist years at the Bus Riders of Union, Union of Los Angeles. She draws on various ideological inspirations one is a black feminist such as audrey lorde hmm black lives matter the founders believe in feminism they are homosexuals it, it gets deeper okay black lives matter this has nothing to do with black this is why when you see them protesting they always bring up something with gay people or something with women's rights or something like that. No. If it's Black Lives Matter, then it should just be black people as collectively, as a whole. All of this stuff is bull crap. This is why we never get anywhere with none of this. Because you got black men that try to fight for whatever reasons. And then you got black women that just say, hey, I'm just standing up for all the black women. That's why we are the way we are now. We're not a nation. 
The only way we're going to become a nation is when the Messiah returns, period. In her black queer feminist lens, as well as bell hooks, both helped her understand her identity. She cites Angela Davis. Now, Angela Davis, that's another woman who supposedly was a revolutionary. She was with the Black Panthers. And some of these people, I believe, was plants. They were planted there. They were never they was never with the cause from the from the moment they was there. They was agents. Now I'm not saying Angela Davis was an agent, but huh, Mother Hampton is, is laid low somewhere right now. Not mean laid low. She will come out and do interviews and things like that. But Fred Hampton got filled with bullet holes. Huey Newton, you know, eventually he started doing drugs. He got caught in the crack e epidemic and somebody just killed him. Mumia, he in jail right now. He been in jail for how long? Probably about 50 years. All these people, man, been in... Real revolutionaries, these people that were trying to fight for what they believe was right, most of them are dead in jail or they banished. They in Africa somewhere in Tanzania. Angela Davis is a feminist, and she she supports feminism, and she's always on TV. Come on, do the math. So she cites Angela Davis for her political theories and reflections on anti-capitalist movements around the world. Her work towards a broader anti-racist and anti-war movement, and her fight against white supremacy in the United States. How are you going to fight against white supremacy but work with white supremacists? Come on, man. It's time. Our people got to stop falling for the okie doke. France Fan Fanon is another inspiration. His work on colonial violence in, Al in Algeria and across the third world, making timely connections for the understanding of the context in which black people live across the world. It gets deeper. Listen closely. She also cites Karl Marx, Vladimir Lenin, and Mao Zedong as providing a new understanding around what our economy, economies could look like. Karl Marx. Karl Marx, which I believe, I think he was a Khazar, Jewish. I could be wrong, but... <laughs> A lot of them, they uh, they say, yeah, I'm from uh, Poland, but they be Jews, Jewish people. So who knows? But um, the man, Karl Marx, created something called Marxism or Marxist. And pretty much what he believed in that needed to take place was a communist state. Anybody don't know what a communist state is? It's sort of like martial law. You won't have many, none, pretty much no rights to none. Like, like few rights to no rights. Your rights will be gone with Marxism. And a lot, a lot of people say, well, that's not what it stands for. No, 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 no. Communism, Germany, when we look at the countries that had communist states and really had martial law, people had curfews, people would be watched in surveillance everywhere they go. If you go to work, you better come straight home or you may get a fine. You may even go to jail. You could get your head blown off or something if you if it's that serious. They kill you. So this lady is a Marxist, okay? This woman is a Marxist because she, she cites Karl Marx as a new understanding around what our economies could look like, all right? This woman is a Marxist, which is the term used to refer to those who was a follower of Karl Marx. Okay? Look up Marxism. Look up who Karl Marx was. The man was not a holy man. He was not. All right? Let's continue on. Communism is a form of government most closely associated with the ideas of Karl Marx, which he outlined in the Communist Manifesto. So this woman agrees with communism. 
If she agrees with Karl Marx, which she said that she followed him and she was inspired by him. So obviously she read his books. She had to, she know these things about him. She know, she knows his ideologies. Could the protests, which lead to riots by black lives matter provocateurs be planned by higher ups who control the group to be just one of the tactics to help bring about a communist state. Think about that. I'm going to repeat it. Black Lives Matter are doing these protests which always leads to riots. Could they be working for the higher ups and bring about these riots and racial conflicts to bring about a communist state, a.k.a. martial law? It's going to be a national thing eventually. Who knows? But I believe so. It's not a coincidence that every protest leads to a riot and there's always something with racial conflict that's why I like black lives matter I, I just i didn't bend down that road looking up all these different leaders and groups and it's just another scam that's it they don't march or protest for nothing else but something about black and white and now Black cops killed a black man. But black men kill black men every day. Abortion clinics kill black babies every day. The food industry killed black people every day. The medical industry killed black people every day. Right? I could go on. Why they don't, why they don't talk about that? I'm going to tell you why. Because they were planted. All right. Patrice Cullors is a homosexual. Or at least she claims to be. I say claim because this whole thing with the media and entertainers, because this is all these people are, entertainers. They, they're not leaders. Agents. Coons put in place to, you know, sell out people. It's like a it's like a big stage, guys. You really don't know what's real. You look at the news and it's like they give you bits and pieces of the truth, but you really don't know what's real. When I look at the news, I like to look at what's going on in the in the place I reside and other things around the world, but you gotta look at it from a certain mindset. When they get to when they get to talking about politics and stuff, I take it with a grain of salt. And entertainers in Hollywood, I take it with a grain of salt. It's the same thing with her. I'm not saying she's not a homosexual because, you know, she's seen with a, with a woman or whatever, but you just never know, guys. Like, a lot of people are, are pushing agendas for whatever reason they believe in it. And a lot of people, you know, may not be who we think they are, but they're doing it for, for a certain reason, and money is one of the main reasons, status and power you know somebody homosexual brother could have got murdered now they pushing homosexuality or whatever you know but it's no coincidence that black lives matter advocates and fight for the rights of the lgbtq and female feminism she also follows witchcraft and does the rituals at the protests she follows the nigerian religion ifa okay let's look up what Ifa or Ifa, what it is. Ifa is a Yoruba religion. Yoruba is a Nigerian tribe. It revolves around divination. Divination is wicked. Anybody that's a believer knows this. And if, if, if you're not a believer and you don't know this, now you know. And if you're going down that road, I'm telling you right now, you better stop. Because I know people that went down that road. It gets real crazy. And a lot of people don't know till they die. These spirits that they're dealing with don't care about nobody. Are you bringing these spirits into your life? 
And you wonder why generational curses is continuing. Them spirits is jumping from person to person. So Colors recalls being forced from her home at 16 when she revealed her queer identity to her parents. Okay, well, it was a sin. It is a sin. Raised as a Jehovah's Witness, but due to her mother's teenage pregnancy, Colors' immediate family was shunned by both the church and their extended family members. She remained committed to the faith for years, even in exile, but later grew disillusioned with the church. She developed an interest in the Nigerian religious tradition of Ifa, incorporating its rituals into political protest events. This is very demonic. So Black Lives Matter people are literally calling upon spirits before they protest. And these ain't good spirits. All right. She told an interviewer in 2015 that seeking spirituality had a lot to do with trying to seek understanding about my conditions. You're going through generational curses. It's that simple. You want to sin. You got to do right. How are you going to break generational curses by going and getting spirits that's on people that's going through the generational curses? You got to get rid of the spirits. How these conditions shape me in everyday life and how I understand them as a part of a larger fight, fight for my life. Okay. All right. So we're going to go and look at her awards. <laughs> ah, you can't make this up, guys. Are you... You a revolutionary, you getting rewards? I mean, not rewards, awards? Come on. You getting awards as a revolutionary. She In 2007, she won the Mario Savio Young Actors, Activist of the Year, uh, an NAACP history maker, 2015. NAACP are sellouts. You know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Al Sharpton and all these people, come on now. Uh, a Glamour Woman of the Year. A glamour woman of the year? A revolutionary or a prophetess or a woman of the most high ain't gonna win a glamour woman of the year. 2016. Alright. One of Fortune's World's Greatest Leaders. 2016. An honorary doctorate from Clarkson University, among several others. In 2015, a Los Angeles Times. Named her one of the new civil rights leaders, the, the Los Angeles Times. In, in June 2020, in honor of her 50th anniversary of the first LGBTQ Pride Parade, queer, queer, Queerty, you can't make this up, Qu Queerty, <laughs> named her among the 50 heroes leading the nation toward equality, acceptance, and dignity for all people. These people that control this system, uh, a lot of them are gay too. They homosexuals. With their little fancy suits, they're billionaires. And, you know, these guys do a lot of things behind closed doors, guys. Uh, they, a lot of sexual and moral things. You know, these people, uh, they just got power, guys. They got power. That You know, they, they get their power from the enemy, from Satan. Let's move on. Let's go to uh, Alicia Garza. Let's, let's let's talk about her, Alicia Garza. That's one of the other founders. This 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 right here about the shock y'all with Alicia Garza. So Alicia Garza, born January fourth, nineteen eighty one, is an American civil rights activist and writer, known for co-founding the International Black Lives Matter movement. She has organized around the issues of health, student services, and rights, rights for domestic workers, ending police brutality anti-racism and violence against transgender hmm there we go again guys there we go again and violence against transgender and gender non-conforming people of color her editorial writing has been published by the guardian the nation rolling stone and truth out hmm why was it published by the guardian the nation rolling stone and truth out because it ain't true they're not going to publish people who speak the truth. You think Rolling Stone going to publish somebody who speak the truth? They're replacing righteousness and truth with this stuff. And the real revolutionaries, we know what happened to them. 
like I said, they in Africa somewhere, somewhere hiding out. Well, not hiding out. They just living. They banished from. They don't want to come back to America. They're afraid. Or well, they, they in jail. Or well, they got filled with bullet holes. They wasn't on a Rolling Stone or Times Magazine receiving awards. She currently directs special projects at the National Domestic Workers Alliance and is, and is the principal at the Black Futures Lab. This is why a lot of people don't want their daughters to be caught up in these universities, guys. I'm not, to, hey, I'm not telling, I'm not, if you want your child to go to college, you just better be wise about it. That's all I'm going to say, because a lot of wickedness goes on at these universities. I'm telling y'all, at these universities, not really city colleges, the university, at these universities, you want your child to go to Harvard, just understand they're going to be, they're going to be around some people. I've seen so many people go to college and pick up all these false ideologies and philosophies and did a lot of sexual moral things and partying and did drugs and did all types of stuff. Come back with their degrees like they did nothing while they were out there. I know. I spoke with them firsthand. All right, let's 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 go to her early life and education. This is Wikipedia. <clears throat> Listen to this. Garza was born to a single mother in Oakland, California. On January 4th, 1981, her first four years were spent in San Rafael living with her African-American mother and her mother's twin brother. After that, she lived with her mother and her Jewish stepfather. Uh-oh. You heard that? I'm going to repeat it again. After that, she lived with her mother and her Jewish stepfather. We're going to go further and you're going to see who the real puppet masters behind Black Lives Matter. And she grew up as Alicia Swartz. Remember that? Remember that last name, Swartz. Okay, guys, remember it. Keep it in your mind, Swartz. That's who she grew up as, Alicia Swartz. But for whatever reason, her name was changed to Garza. Okay? She don't call herself Alicia Swartz anymore. She called herself Alicia Garza. Right? But she, she grew up as Alicia Swartz in a mixed race and mixed religion household. Garza identifies as Jewish. Do you hear this? She identifies as Jewish. Now, they said nothing about her father. I don't... I'm not saying her father is Jewish. <laughs> it's just... You never know. <laughs> you just never know, guys. Like, maybe her father wasn't Jewish, but you'd be surprised if her her uh, grandfather, maybe, maybe her father was mixed with Jewish. You see, because a lot of people that's mixed with Jewish, they don't be really looking mixed a lot of times. Because a lot of Jewish people, a lot of Jewish people come from Edom. And anybody know about Edom, they know that Edom is the twin brother of us the only thing is that they have white skin and i don't believe every white person is evil i don't and i'm not gonna get into that that'd be another video but it's set tribes of white people that are eat them and it's some tribes of white people that they ain't even eat them but when our people mix with these edomite jewish people a lot of times you'll look at them and you may not even know they was even mixed. You may see their hair and may be like, okay. But if you ain't see the hair, like Lauren London, I'm not going to lie to you. When I first saw Lauren London, I thought that lady was just a light-skinned black woman. I didn't think that she had a Jewish father. Drake, his mother is Jewish. But I'm going to continue on. Garza identifies as Jewish. So this, this lady identifies as Jewish. The family lived first in San Rafael, then to, to Biron, and ran an antiques business, assisted later by her brother Joey, eight years her junior. When she was 12 years old, Alicia engaged in activism promoting school sex education about birth control. Look, they started her off. 
and wickedness. Promoting schools education about birth control. Kids don't need to know nothing about birth control at no 12 years old. Birth control is for the wicked. Condoms is for the wicked. That's another video. Why is that for the wicked? <laughs> if you're married and you're righteous, you're doing the right thing, you're striving to be righteous, why do you need condoms? But if you got to use your con a condom with your husband or wife, something wrong. Let me continue on. Enrolling in the University of California, San Diego. She continued her activism by working at the Student Health Center and joining the Student Association calling for higher pay for the university's janitors. In her final year at college, she helped organize the first Women of Color Conference, a university-wide convocation held at UCSD in 2002. She graduated in 2002 with a degree in anthropology and sociology. Ooh, sociology, okay. You know, they, they, excuse me, they was, they was raising this girl since she was young to do what she's doing now. You best believe it. You best believe it. Don't, don't, don't be confused. Like I be reading books on these people. They, 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 they take certain people and they raise them up. They don't go to our schools. They don't go to, to, uh, the colleges we go to. These people are raised to do this thing. Um, so the other founder, uh, she's a Nigerian woman, and her name is uh, the. Hold on, guys. Hold on one second. Uh, so the other founder is Nigerian. Her name is Ayo Temeti, formerly known as Opa Temeti, is an American human rights activist, writer, strategist, and community organizer. She is co-founder of Black Lives Matter. She is the former executive director of United States First National Immigrant Rights Organization for People of African Descent, the Black Alliance for Just Immigration, working there in various roles over nine years. With Black Lives Matter, Timeti brings attention to the racial inequities forced, faced by black people. She started as an active community organizer in her hometown advocating for human rights issues. She has campaigned for advancing human rights, migrant rights, and racial justice worldwide. She also worked as a case manager for survivors of domestic violence. <clears throat> with this, with this woman, excuse me, <clears throat> with this woman right here, um, I, I really don't have much information on her. Like, she's uh, she really she's not really like public like that. Um, she's not really involved with. Black Lives Matter as much. So um, I, I just really don't know much about her. You know, she's, uh, it says she is the daughter of a Nigerian immigrant who hailed from the city of Lagos. Her parents are of Yoruba ethnicity and they speak the Yoruba and Isan languages. I don't know if she picked up this Yoruba religion from her or the other founder, Patrice Colors, or I don't know. But her great, great, great grandfather was born in the country of Togo. And his son, Temeti's great-great-grandfather, was from Cameroon. Eventually, Temeti's grandfather was born in Cameroon before immigrating to Nigeria. She is the oldest of three children and has two young brothers. She grew up in mostly suburbs of Phoenix, Arizona, with other children of immigrants. In addition to Yoruba and Isan, Temeti grew up speaking Pidgin English. Um, so I guess because she grew up different you know she's fighting for immigration and different things like that but um i just can't find much on her but i don't believe she's innocent either this woman won a lot of different awards as well los angeles times new civil rights leader 2014 cover story of time magazine 2013 if you're on the cover of time guys you're not a revolutionary period you know and the reason i keep saying revolutionary is because that's what these people claim to be they claim to be civil rights activists and all these different things, but no, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the, the people that were civil rights activists didn't get on Time Magazine until they got filled with bullet holes. When they got filled with bullet holes, you know, laid out in front of a hotel somewhere like Martin Luther King or, you know, shot up like Malcolm X or, you know, Fred Hampton, then they'll put them on the front of a magazine. They did now. You know, they're not about to put them on front of a magazine and give them awards and all these different things, you know, like, come on now. Uh, 
But both Alicia Garza and Patrice Cullors are connected to Jewish people. And not just regular Jewish people, but Jewish people with power, which I believe is where the ideologies of Black Lives Matter come from. All right? Now, you may say, who they're connected to? Now, it had already came out long ago that these people were connected to George Soros. George Soros is a Hungarian-American businessman and philanthropist. Anybody that's a philanthropist, I'm, guys, people that's philanthropists, they're usually not doing too much good. I'm just saying. I, like, I, I, I didn't see too many of these guys that call themselves philanthropists that's doing, like, good things, you know. So when I hear that, it's like I automatically, like, you know, antennas pop up. As of March 2021, he had a net worth of $8.6 billion, having donated more than $32 billion to the Open Society Foundations. So if he donated $32 billion to the Open Society Foundations, I haven't did research on that, but, I mean... That's something to do research on. Who is the Open Society Foundations? Because why would you give $32 billion to them? Of which $15 billion has already been distributed, representing 64% of his original fortune. Such a good man. <laughs> yeah, right. Forbes called him the most generous giver in terms of percentage of net worth. All right. Now look at this. Born in Budapest to a na up observant Jewish family <laughs> figures, right? It's all see, people think Kanye West and these people crazy. Kanye West, look, y'all. Kanye West just brought it to a crowd of people that didn't know this. People who were followers of Kanye West and his fans, they didn't know nothing about these types of things. But let me tell you, people have been talking about this for, for years. Years. When I say years, people have been talking about this since the 1800s, about these Jewish people controlling things. Probably before that. This is nothing new, guys. They All they try to do is just keep it in the dark. So whoever starts speaking this or whatever, they say they're crazy. The books, they... they they rewrite books, republish, do all types of things to get you to not read this stuff, get you to not see certain videos, censor things, all types of stuff. People been saying this stuff. Guys, this is nothing new. So people say, oh, Kanye West is not crazy or this or that. No, people been saying this. This is nothing new. Soros survived the Nazi occupation of Hungary and moved to the United Kingdom in 1947. He studied at London School of Economics and was awarded BSc in philosophy, <laughs> philosophy in 1951 and then a Master of Science degree also in philosophy in 1954. Look at this. Soros began his business career by taking various jobs at merchant banks in the United Kingdom and then the United States before starting his hedge fund Double Eagle in 1969. He connected with the bankers. And people don't talk about the United Kingdom enough. Those people are powerful. Them, um, Elizabeth and all those people, they powerful. Well, Elizabeth, she passed away, but, um, the, the family, the British monarchs, those people are powerful. They are just as powerful as these Jewish people. And I had to do more research, but I, I strongly believe they both eat them. Like, I know that these Khazars, for sure, the the um, the fake Jewish people, that they come from Edom. You may have some mixed in that may not be Edom, but for the most part, they come from Edom. Um, and like I said, it's, it's, so, it's a combination of them. So it may be little clans amongst them that's not Edom or tribes, but they eat them. Okay. The British, I believe they could be eat them as well. You know, the Dukes, <laughs> come on now. And these people are very close. 
Edom is like it, it's hard to find him in certain countries and stuff because he blend in. You know, he 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 takes on different last names and all types of stuff. He didn't mix with so many people. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to even go into that because I know some people that's maybe listening may not even uh, be at that point in the Bible, but that's in the scriptures. So I'm going to talk about that in another video. But um, so this guy's name, let's let's look at what his name, what his name is. Soros was born in Budapest in the kingdom of Hungary to a prosperous, non-observant Jewish family who like many upper middle class Hungarian Jews at the time, were uncomfortable with their roots. Okay. Soros was wrongly described, has wrongly, uh, descri- well, they, I don't know how they wrote this, described his home as a Jewish anti Semitic home. It said his house was a Jewish anti Semitic home. His mother, Erzabet, or known as Elizabeth, came from a family that owned a thriving silk shop. His father, Tibadar, also known as Teodoro Savark, was a lawyer, figures, and a well-known Esperanto speaker who edited the Esperanto literary magazine Liter- Literatura Mandu, Mando, and raised his son to speak the language. Tivadar had also had also been a prisoner of war during a, during and after World War One until he escaped from Russia and rejoined his family in Budapest. The two married in 1924. In 1936, Soros family, li- listen guys, listen. In 1936, Soros family changed their name from the German Jewish Swartz to Soros. I don't think it's a coincidence that George Soros' real last name is Swartz. His family's last name is Swartz. Alicia Garza, her stepfather, the Jewish man that raised her to be Jewish and taught her all the ideologies and sent her away. His last name is Swartz as well. And George Soros is connected to Black Lives Matter. He is, people have showed the evidence that he funds Black Lives Matter. Think about that, guys. This is all a stage I'm going to continue to read and we're going to go on but as protective camouflage and increasingly anti-semitic Hungary Tivadar like the new name because it is a paint uh, palindrome uh, and because of its meaning in Hungarian Soros means next in line or designated successor and Esperanto it means will soar Uh, the, the main reason why a lot of these people See, 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 look, this is the thing. People, all black people don't come from the same nationality. All black people are not the same. It's the same thing with white people. All white people or European people are not the same. You have countries in Europe. These people did not like these people. That's why they had the, that's why they was hiding and changing their names and stuff. It wasn't because they the chosen people. It's because these people knew what they was up to. They knew that the plot that they uh, created to, to, cre- uh, to take over the whole world. Do your research. Many of the European countries knew this. This is why they didn't want them there. But it didn't work because now you got new successes. They raise up. They want money. They covetous. So they pay these people and boom. Now they in control. Listen, guys. Both Alicia Garza and Patrice Colors are connected to Jewish people. All right? Jewish powerful people. And this doesn't make the founders or participants innocent by any chance. But just know, there are those with power controlling Black Lives Matter. Okay? They're controlling it behind the scenes. They're controlling Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter, I'm sorry. You have puppet masters controlling the puppets. Let's get ready and wrap this up. So these are some things that we need to ask ourselves. Black Lives Matter, they don't stand up against gang violence. They don't stand up 
uh, against abortion clinics. Okay, because they they say Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. No lives matter. Okay, not to these people. No lives matter. It's all about money and power and status. Black Lives Matter, they don't stand up against gang violence. They don't stand up against abortion clinics that kills majority of black people. They don't stand up against the hip-hop industry that's destroying the minds of the black youth and adults. They don't stand up against Hollywood. They don't stand up against the prison system. They don't stand up against the drugs being put in the communities. And so many other things that's destroying black people, but you say Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter, guys, was created to bring about a communist state. That's what I strongly believe. That's why they're constantly protesting. Protesting and causing riots. And then all, all of a sudden now, they're calling out a st state of emergency and martial law and all these different things. Because that's what they're created to do. And they're created, created to cause racial conflict. The powers that be don't care about nobody. Satan's children don't care. Listen. They don't care what you are. They don't care if you're black, if you're Irish, European, white, uh, Italian, Asian, Indian. They don't care. We're all slaves and cattle in their eyes. Black people are on the top of the list because we are the children of Israel. They know the they know that the the roles that we play in prophecy. So they have to strive to keep us in sin, to keep us low. And as long as we keep sinning, this is Edom. This is Edom. This is Canaan. This is Japheth. This is Ishmael. These are all these nations that they know us. They know us. They know that if they keep us in sin, that they always have the upper hand. These people know us. Black Lives Matter was created to cause racial conflict, guys, to bring about a communist state. The founder was accused of stealing money, right? Bought a big mansion, Patrice Cullors. They're capitalizing off of black people's death. Soon as a black person died, you know, by the hands of a police officer or something, I'm not saying it's right. By no means is it right. And I'm not saying racism don't exist. But soon as a black person died by the hands of a police officer or a white guy or a cop or something, a black cop, it could it don't it can't be a regular black man or a regular a black gang bang. It gotta be a black cop. You know why? Because now it gives them a reason to fight against the state. But the founders are not fighting. When it's all said and done, they're gonna be somewhere hiding out. While all those people that were uh deceived want to riot and loot and protest, they're going to be the ones uh, prepared for slaughter. And a lot of these deaths, I believe, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I, some of these deaths, I, it just don't even add up. Not the Tyrese Nichol, Tyree Nichols situation. I didn't, I didn't look that up. I didn't really do research on it because I, I just don't be having time to. You know, I did a lot of research in the past on some of these things. Some of the stuff you don't even have to do much research on it'd be right in your face. But, you know, I'd rather research other things because I know that the news is like 90% lies. And I think a lot of these deaths are uh, are not even real. That's just me, guys. Some of them are real, some of them ain't. And some of them are targeted. Like, they already knew they was going to kill somebody. So call something. And I believe majority of them are real, but some of them are, some of them just suspiciously didn't seem real. Um, black people need to repent and stop following false leaders. In Isaiah chapter nine verse sixteen, it says, "For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that and they that are led of them are destroyed." I'm gonna repeat that. This is talking about the Israelites who are black people. Period. Look what it says. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 16. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. 
and they that are led of them are destroyed. If you want to be led by these people, Black Lives Matter in particular, who I'm speaking of, just know that you're going down the wrong path. Do your own research. Do your own research. And I'm going to end it with one more scripture. So many may say, well, what are we supposed to do? This is what you're supposed to do. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, you got to humble yourself. Humble yourself. This life is not all about you. And pray. Ask for forgiveness. Seek the Most High's face. It says, turn from your wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. This is not your land. No matter how much status and education and money and power you obtain, this is not your land. Many of our people, you can't, you can't expect to be blessed in life and you continue to do wickedness. We hoop and holler and march and protest down the street when a white police officer kills us. And trust me, racism is terrible, it's wrong. But the facts of the matter is that more black people die by the hands of black, more black men die by the hands of black men. And if you don't want to accept that, if you don't want to uh, admit that, if you don't want to accept that truth, you will never really understand the real problem. No matter how much you march and protest and try to fight against something until you stop doing wickedness and learn to love your own people, you will be in this situation. So all praises to the Most High. This is the truth, period. Hope y'all have a good day.